welcome brothers and sisters. Welcome back and welcome to your new home a new people. This community is very rich and diverse, vibrant. You have all ages, all backgrounds, all cultures. That's why it's one of the things that I love about this community when I came from Peru four years ago, the diversity and the richness we have. So embrace this gift that you have here. This is truly Catholic. Catholic means universal. So it's a blessing, open to the different as a gift for you. Okay, today we are listening to a gospel that starts a new phase. Christmas ended. The year began in Advent, then we had Christmas, and now we are continuing this year with the ordinary time, that's why I'm dressed in green. And just last week, Jesus was baptized. That, that's the end of the Christmas season, the baptism of Christ. And now we see the next step. Jesus is starting his public ministry. He has been already anointed with the energy, the power of the Holy Spirit, of truth, of love and wisdom. People have seen that the whole Trinity is embracing him. I mean, he is the second person of the Trinity, but they have heard the voice of the Father and the Dove the Holy Spirit coming, like investing him with all the power and the mission. And now he does his first move. But who starts this first move? It's John the Baptist. He's going to look at Jesus after he's baptized. And he's going to tell John and Andrew, the disciples of the Baptist, Behold, that guy is the Lamb of God. He's going to use this title, Lamb of God. He could have used many other expressions, many other titles for the Messiah. There were like titles like the, the shepherd that was going to come or the lion of Judah. I don't know, many, many expressions. But he used Lamb of God, saying this is the representative given by God to remove the sins, the obstacle between you and God. There is a gap. There is something of immorality that we all have, some ignorance, something that is not like making us free, that is stuck inside. The lamb is going to be a gentle and meek and sweet being that is going to take that on, the, on his shoulders and it's going to make you feel free. That's the purpose. And that requires a sacrifice, being a victim. So the lamb comes. And he says that John the Baptist points. So John and Andrew, oh man, this is so interesting. They are fascinated. So they start to follow him. Jesus, I think he waited for a, for a while. I think they walked maybe a couple of miles. Because Jesus is perfect strategy. It's like his strategy of love is all the time in behind every move. So he waited for a while till they were already in a kind of deserted place. And I can imagine him turning. He turns, looks at them, and asks, what are you looking for? Interesting question. He's a question to the heart, to the root. Like, what are you searching? Like, what are you thirsty for? And it's the question that is addressed to each one of us right now. Like, what is moving you here to Mass right now? You can be doing things that are more productive or more fun in the eyes of the world. What are you doing here, sitting here? What do you expect? What are you longing for? Maybe is some peace, some inner reconciliation, some mercy, some strength, some hope, justice in the world? I don't know. But God knows perfectly what is moving you here. But he wants you to acknowledge it so you can own your own freedom, your own life. What are you looking for? So they were like paralyzed. John and Andrew were <gasps> frozen. Uh, um, Rabbi, they said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Weird question, right? Why are you, where are you staying? First of all, they say Rabbi, which means teacher. 
And that is already so powerful for us because that means that these guys recognize that they don't know everything. You, I want you to teach me something. My vision of life, my knowledge is not good enough. I want to leave my prejudice, my paradigm, my idea of life behind for a little while. I want to see life from your vision. Master, teacher is like saying, I want you to share your own vision with me. I, I want to see life from a better perspective. Myself, my people, I want to love myself more. I want to be more forgiven. And I know it is possible. Are you the one? Jesus says, come and follow me. Interesting. It's not giving an easy answer. It's not saying, I'm going to show you so that you can believe. It's saying, believe, take the risk, trust, follow me, and you will see. Take the risk, follow me. Come into my house, and you will see. He's like saying, I'm not going to give you abstract theories, norms, dogmas, and theories and discipline rules. That is good, but that's not the core. Come into my house. Experience my friendship. Talk with me. Let us, let us be friends. And then you will understand. And then you will see. Many people, and in my case also was like that, try to understand faith, Christianity, from the outside without the experience. And it doesn't match. It doesn't make sense. It is attractive, magnetic, but doesn't make sense until you get in and you take the risk and you believe and you trust. These guys said yes. Okay, we have nothing to lose. We'll follow you. One night, one evening, nothing. It was 4 p.m. It was recorded at the time because it was so meaningful for the heart of these guys. They spent the whole night talking with God, with Jesus. It was not a house like in Nazareth because Jesus just moved out of Nazareth from the house of Mary and Joseph to start his public ministry so we can visualize a little tent in the woods, the house of Jesus, preparing him for them a bonfire, cooking some fish, some bread, wine, the smiling in the face of Jesus, preparing a mat for them, talking for hours about mysteries of the origin of the universe and maybe asking him about the prophets and him revealing that he knew them from their mother's womb and they were magnetically captivated by this person and then talking about the stars and joking and cracking jokes. Yeah, Jesus is the perfect human being, so he's perfectly joyful and free and cheerful. What a conversation. To the point that at the end of that day in the dawn, Andrew and John leave, and Andrew goes directly to his brother, Simon, who's going to be Peter. Simon, come. I think we found the Messiah, the Christ. So Peter goes to Jesus. Peter is seen by Jesus, and Jesus says, You are Simon. You are Simon, the son of John. I know where you come from. I know your dad. I know your people. I know your blood. And then says, Now you will be called Cephas, Peter, the rock. Can you imagine that? But I want you to see the chain. How God is touching you through others. The first link in this chain is John the Baptist pointing and because of him is that John and Andrew were able to follow Jesus. And they took the risk and they had the experience of intimacy with him. And they just opened himself, themselves to Jesus. And then because of that risk taken, he went to Peter. And Peter came. And you are here right now being a link in that chain. God has touched your heart through others, many people. A chain of mediations and that's why you are here with your heart thirsty and open with hope because others have touched your heart who brought you here 
Maybe somebody called you, maybe somebody invited you, maybe you saw somebody praying and you said it's beautiful. Maybe you met a friend in your team, in your class, in your club. What touched your heart? But touch you through others. We are not saved in an isolated way, individualistic way, but as a community. And maybe you are meant to be a link in a chain for others. What of your gestures? The way you look at things, the way you look at people, the way you greet others, the courage you have, the authenticity you have, your smile, your goodness, can be a luminous sign for many other people. People that you cannot imagine are going to come to God because of you. You cannot imagine how powerful you are as a link in this chain of friendship, the fellowship of Christ, the group of the friends of Christ. What was his first action when he began his public ministry? Making a band of brothers, a band of friends. The first decision of Jesus is making a group of friends, his fellowship which is the church. This group of weak but joyful people, sinners but touched by mercy. Let us share this gift. And here, where God is calling you, this parish, this time, right now,